Hey, how's everybody doing? I'm making a video to talk about cucumbers. Now, I got these cucumbers from the garden, and this here is about one week, one week worth of cucumbers. Now, if everybody, anybody here, has anybody here grown cucumbers in their garden? Raise your hand. Okay, I could see there's a few out there who have grown cucumbers, but not many of you. All right, you could put your hands down. Now, any of you who've grown cucumbers know for a fact that these things, once they start growing, they go fast and they hide. And the first thing, first thing you realize, you've got these huge big cucumbers and they're turning yellow and they ain't good anymore. Or you harvest them and then you've got so many cucumbers, you can't possibly eat four or five cucumbers a day for a month and a half. So they're kind of frustrating to grow. However, let me show you the operation I've got going here. Now, what I do is I pick them as small as I can. Look at how small this cucumber is. Okay? Now, I have three different uh, sizes here going. Actually, what I did is all the small ones I put here these are the bigger ones that escaped because you miss one day of harvesting they go from this to this in like a day I, I'm telling you you know or they go from this tiny and the next day they're ready and then the next day too big I mean too big I, most people will say this is not too big but it's too big for what we're doing and we're pickling and this, this batch here is just a different kind. These are Boston pickling cucumbers. So uh, there are some varieties that are actually better to pickle because they stay, uh, they don't go mushy in the middle. They stay crunchier and they pickle well. These guys are just, I don't know what kind, but the reason that I separated them is because I realized that, let me wash this here a little bit, that they, uh, my first batch I made went mushy inside. They were actually became hollow inside and when I, when they were uh, fermented, I pressed on it and they would go like, phoot, phoot, they'd be empty inside. Yeah, it doesn't make for a very nice uh, pickle. Now, this is one week's worth. We're probably going to have four times this amount. This is going to make a lot of pickles. But we love pickles and last year we made enough pickles to last us an entire year. Okay, and I, and I don't know, raise your hand. How many of you have gone to the organic food store and bought fermented pickles? Okay now they are expensive like like a mason jar like this of fermented pickles are like eight dollars right and it could be more if you're like living in this posh area in california you know you're gonna pay for your pickles now one thing i need to say about fermented pickles or dill pickles or most of them you find out there are not the true authentic fermented pickles. They are pickles soaked in vinegar. Okay? The, that is not the real deal. This is an imitation and most people that's what they know but is not healthy. Who knows like how that vinegar was processed and plus, you know, you don't need to be eating that much vinegar anyways. Fermented pickles, like these ones here, see? These, like this little guy here, I'm gonna eat it. Oh, look at it. Mmm. Oh my God. These things 
have lactic acid not vinegar lactic acid now lactic acid is produced by special types of bacteria like lactobacilli and other ones um, mm, my goodness when they're small like that they are crunchy they taste sour lactic acid tastes kind of like vinegar uh, but it's so much better and why is it so much healthier it's so much healthier because in here there are still the bacteria lactobacilli and there's the uh, and then there's the um, the juices that come out from that which has lactic acid and other stuff and that and so you've got the probiotics which are the bacteria and then you got what they call the prebiotic which is the thing that um, helps to sustain the population of bacteria inside of your guts in your tummy you have got a lot of bacteria and yeast and all that chances are your tummy has got the bad kinds growing in there and that is making you sick is making you have all sorts of diseases and because the medical system does not know about jack shit they will give you antibiotics that will kill all of the gut bacteria and make you more sick this here is the cure this is what you eat to make your digestive system healthy and that is what you want so how do you do this well if you've got pickling like cucumbers you get them small and you just pickle them like that they'll stay crunchy if you got big ones and they're not necessarily the right kind you could cut them slice them up and then pickle them ferment them in slices you don't ferment them as long because they don't need to be fermented the, the all the way inside it the, the surface area is greater a little word here about fermentation now these for, were fermented see I put a little I put dill actually in here mmm dill pickles let's have another little tasty poo mm -mm -mm -mm. oh my god I wish you could taste this these have dill now here's how it's done you take some water now you don't take tap water city water is not good for you and is not good for fermentation because it kills the bacteria the good bacteria that ferment that is good for your digestive system that water kills bacteria that's why they put chlorine and it also has all of the chemicals that could not be filtrated by your the municipal filtration plant including all the pesticides chem, um, chemicals the uh, hormones uh, and so on and so on do your research and you will realize that water is not water is not water okay they like to pretend water is h2o water is water is water and they say you don't need to be getting special water take the municipal water that is good for the environment it is good for their wallet it is bad for your tummy and then there's fluoride which is bad for your brain so we get artesian well water and we actually travel and go get it at an organic blueberry farm in order to ferment food and to drink and also soon we will be making our own slow sand filters and I will make a video on that so you need water not H2O real water and 
if you're interested in water, you could look at the works of Victor Schoberg. 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 I don't know. I, I don't know if he was German. He had one of those names like that. This guy explains how water goes from an immature state and matures. Water has a maturing process. It is like a living thing. It is not just a H2O. Same, like these scientists, you know, they, they like to think they know stuff by saying water is H2O. Eh, wrong. And the same with salt, okay? They will say salt is NaCl, sodium chloride. Eh, wrong. <laughs> salt is an amazing mineral, okay, that is full of stuff full of different kinds of minerals together. Some people say salt is living. Salt, and that's why you have a lot of allusions of salt in sacred texts, like the Bible. Just read that. You'll see you'll see how they talk about salt. And salt is not just this vulgar chemical. So, this salt is called real salt, and it's, um, this one is a sea salt, and it's a not process and you have to look in the back and you have to read the ingredients you cannot be lazy when it comes to your health it's a question of consciousness how conscious are you and what kind of decisions are you making to increase your consciousness now this here also says, this salt does not supply iodine. Great! It has not been tampered with. So unprocessed, no iodine, great. This is real salt. Now the salt that you buy, that you eat at the restaurant and different places, is is NaCl. So you see the scientists maybe they didn't lie, but there's also anti-caking chemicals in there, byproducts of the uh, process of making this NaCl. Sodium chloride. There's a box of sodium chloride that is blue and has a little girl with an umbrella and it says Morton salt. Now that salt, do your research on it. It's sodium chloride. It has been processed by huge chemical plants that extract the minerals. I think it's ma magnesium or manganese. Anyways, they use that um, to put in fuel for military jets uh, for propulsion. The um, what is left over is NaCl that they put in boxes and sell to you and call it salt. It's not salt. This is what makes you sick. They say do not eat salt. You have to cut down on your salt because that's not salt. You have to cut down on your NaCl poison is what they should be saying. So you need real water and you need real salt. These are the ingredients that will create life. So how much salt, how much water? Well, example, one quart like this, which is uh, three cups, 24 ounces. You need two tablespoons of salt for one quart for three cups of water. You could just double it up if you're making a bigger batch. What I do is I prepare my salt and water, which is called a brine, and then this brine I will add, see, to this quart jar. I will fill this quart jar with cucumbers, pack them as much as I can, nice and neatly in here. I don't know if you could see here, they're kind of all lined up like like this here and pushed in, packed in tight so that they don't float. And then you pack them in here. Once they're nicely packed, you pour your brine and cover them all the way 
top to the top. You don't want to see their little heads poking out, like see in this one. But this one they're poking out because I took one out and, uh, and it doesn't matter because it's already fermented and it goes in the fridge and it won't get bad. It won't go bad. Now, what else? If you've got the right kind, like this Boston pickle and Boston cucumber, pickling cucumbers, and they're small, you just can, might get away with salt and water, with a brine. However, if you want to make sure that your pickles, your fermented pickles are crunchy, you need to add something that has tannin. Like this here is um, wild muscadine vines. There's like uh, grapes. You could also use oak leaves or uh, anything that has tannins that you know of that is safe to eat. I personally, just because they grow here all over, I just go outside and collect these, wash them down a bit, tear them into little pieces and stuff them in my in, in my mason jar. They keep them, they keep the, um, the cucumbers crunchy, which is a good thing to have. <laughs> now, what else? You could add dill in here if you've grown your, your own dill. Um, best your uh, pickle, your cucumbers, your dill has not been sprayed with chemicals, um, with antifungal um, uh, insecticides, pesticides, blah blah blah. But you know, if you're growing your own cucumbers, you don't need to spray them. You don't need to spray ever in the garden. Ever, ever. No spraying nothing. <laughs> it is not needed. There are no cases where it is needed, except if you want to make your wallet thicker and make people sick. You don't want to be doing that. Food is sacred, and so keep it sacred, okay? Now, is there missing something? Oh yes, when you get your cucumbers, they will look like this. They will have a little stem, because you cut them with your scissors, and they will have this little vestigial remnant of the flower. Right? It's beautiful. This used to be a flower, a bee came, or a bumblebee, or whatever, and then it made this wonderful cucumber. So you want to be taking this off, take cutting this off, cleaning it real quickly just to make sure there's no too much, you know, uh, contaminants on it or whatever because you're going to be fermenting. You don't need this to be a sterile environment because you don't want, you're not in the business of killing bacteria. You're in the business of growing bacteria. And yes, there will be all sorts of bacteria going inside of your mason jar. But the brine has salt, and this is what is the key. The salt, this quantity, this uh, concentration of the brine, which is two tablespoons per three cups, you know, approximately, is enough salt to kill or to uh, to not let the quote bad bacteria grow and to let the quote good bacteria end quote grow the lactic acid producing bacteria that make the pickles sour. Now, I put the quotes there because there are no bad bacteria per se, you know, it all depends on what you're trying to reach here and accomplish. We're fermenting, we're not rotting, okay? Big difference. Rotting, food that is rotting is exposed to air. Food that is fermenting is in liquid, has no oxygen. Okay, so you need to make sure your pickles are all the way underwater and that they're not sticking out too much. If they stick out, they might get white, moldy, um, 
I don't know what if it's mold, but um, most of the times, you know, you could toss those away, uh, clean them, and eat them. Ah, you know, I don't go crazy unless it's really, um, really fuzzy and white, and I, then I don't eat it. But you know, I, it doesn't happen because I pack them in, and I make sure that water is always above. Uh, one thing you could do is reserve yourself a cucumber that has just the right size to be able to like put on top and squeeze it on top and keep everything under water and then uh, you sacrifice the last one. The last one is kind of like you know it will be uh, uh, not completely under the, the water but it is doing the job of pressing the others down so it's your sacrificial, uh, sacrificial cucumber. Okay, now 20 minutes is way too long to talk about cucumbers. So if you have any questions, just go ahead, sacredagriculture at gmail.com. That is sacredagriculture at gmail.com. Or just go to uh, my blog, which is www.sacredagriculture.wordpress.com. All right, take care of your tummy. Bye-bye.